glossy, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> um, carrying on this marvellous legacy of the Eva Brewer Gallery. And I knew Eva, I was privileged to know her and share some time with her, and what a remarkable woman she was. A woman who came uh, through many hazards to arrive in this country and thought about contributing in a very enlightened way. She loved art, and she loved the art of women. And it's only recently that women have come into their own in this country uh, and uh, you know, it's taken a place alongside the, the men artists. And it's a fantastic thing. I mean, all of you who uh, share the love of women also share the love of women's brains. And for a long time, women's brains were not given their full license. And we thank Nikki for carrying on that tradition. Uh, and her brain. And her brain. <laughs> I suppose we should talk about the artists. And what do all these artists share? I mean, they're all different. They're all a product of the school, but they're also a product of their own background and their own hearts and their own minds and their own loves. And all of these things make up the artist. The artist doesn't have much choice in what they do. I mean, they are born to do certain things. As my old friend Charlie Blackman said, we all have one picture in us. Uh, and we, uh, we paint it over and again, over again all our lives. And the proof of that, of course, is that you've seen one Rembrandt, you've seen them all, and they all have that same feeling. <laughs> <laughs> they all do. They all have that same feeling. You can sense that it's a Rembrandt. I mean, we, you and I could tell fakes. I don't know why all these experts come. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that quality that artists have of doing, of having a, a driven, obsessive element in their nature, I've seen it so often, people coming in and the wonderful thing about our little school, and I think this is what distinguishes Ashton's from any other school, is that it is student-driven. We don't have courses as such. You don't go from uh, course to course. You just start drawing, start painting, and you reach a certain level in that, and your tutor will say, well, I think you've mastered classical drawing, cast drawing, and so on. You can go on and do this. It might take you a year, and uh, you can hear them you know, the, the model artists having a good time with the live model in the next trip, no, you will continue doing skulls and casts. And of course, this is a very ancient tradition. The Ashton's didn't invent that. It was, it was really, it goes back to the uh, Florentines, it goes back to the uh, Renaissance, it goes back to uh, the great French schools, the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris and so on. We are a very classical, traditional art school, but we're not ashamed to say that. Throughout the whole period of this, what the latter 20th century, it was somehow, you know, you've got to be at the cutting edge. Sometimes the cutting edge could actually sever all the arteries of the artist because they didn't actually have the technique to actually paint. And so it's no accident that, for instance, uh, you look at this week's, this uh, month's uh, Art in Australia, and they're talking about uh, a, a very, very important exhibition of the history of art uh, and in Australia. And who are the painters? Who is the, who, who, the painting there of the Strapper of Dobell and the painting of Margaret Olley? And they are regarded as, regarded by everybody as being supreme examples of the best of Australian painting. And where did Mr. Dobell paint? Study at the Julian Ashton Art School. Mm -hmm. And Mr. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Olson, of course, uh, John Olson, who was going to open our exhibition this year. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, uh, when I rang him, he said, well, I've had a, you said a quadruple bypass, Paul. And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'll do it for you next year, which was really great. But he, of course, he loves the school, and he, he, he reckons that he got something from that, the school. A lot of people would wonder what he got from the Ashton <laughs> School, but actually he got that, that love of drawing, that love of line. And he says, I'm not an abstract, abstract artist. I'm a, a figurative painter and draftsman. And so... All of these artists here, and it's a, a really, you know, what you, how many artists have you got, young Nikki, here? How many of you? Uh, how, uh, many artists? how many artists here tonight, today? Uh, nine. 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 In a, in a, nine in a, exhibiting. Nine exhibiting. Well, there must be 9,000 artists that have gone through Ashton's. And you could fill this gallery 900 times uh, with superb and wonderful and original and unseen works. And as the poet said, uh, for many a flower of purest, no, for many a pearl of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear, for many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Well, these artists 
are not wasting their sweetness on the desert air, they are being seen. But I often feel so many people, and of course I'm going to be counting on you, Nikki, now, to actually <laughs> get me so often to be dragging out some more of this 900 artists, unsung, especially the women artists. And this brings me to something very special that this wonderful woman with the blessing of her marvellous husband, Bruce, has done. And that is, those of you who were at our annual exhibition last Sunday, she was on the stage, young Nikki, and she said, I want to support the Thea Proctor Scholar in the school and give her a small exhibition in our gallery. And she's going to do that. I hope she's going to do it for not only this year, but next year, and perhaps with the permission of Bruce beyond that. But <laughs> it's a great thing I mean, to be able to have uh, an exhibition uh, in a commercial gallery, which is also an icon. Now, Julian Ashton himself was responsible for the founding of the Macquarie Galleries. Not many people know that, but he was part of the group that set it up. And we had a long tradition with this school of, you know, being enterprising. And this young woman has is carrying on a great tradition. This school carries on a great tradition. And what we have here is the beginning, as they said in the wonderful film, uh, the beginning uh, of, uh, was it Casablanca? This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for letting me open your lecture.